So today we've got, like I mentioned, we've got a packed schedule, um, but we're going to start with some reflections from yesterday and preview what we're doing today. Um, and I'd like to invite Alan to go ahead and join, um, kick us off with this reflection. Thanks, Lissa. Um, good morning, everyone. I personally woke up very excited for today. I think we've all um, absorbed a lot over the last two days, but um, I think today will be about tying it all together. And hopefully this is not the last, you know, forum we have for, um, you know, interacting with each other. Um, and we can continue to think after today about um, how we carry this forward. Um, but yesterday, uh, we played the decision for the decades game. Um, we, you know, kind of learned that we have to make decisions, but uh, we go into them um, with uh, the information we have. Um, we all have different, um, you know, risk tolerance and appetites for, for risk. Um, it also depends on your who you are and what scale you're operating at. Um, but that we have to um, expect the unexpected, um, you know, really uh, try to understand as much as we can um, how, uh, you know, the future may pan out, but also take into account that the rules are changing um, in terms of climate change um, and that there's all sorts of variables that you might not even uh, be able to anticipate, even for the um, things that you know are changing, um, you have to consider what else can happen. Um, and so uh, that brings us to decision making under deep uncertainty. You know, there are ways that we can um, operate uh, under these, um, you know, quote unquote rules um, that, uh, you know, we've seen in practice um, from uh, the, the two case studies that we um, saw at Metropolitan Water District of Southern California and South Florida Water Management District, um, really highlighting how um, we can take into account uh, all the different variables, um, the potential for changes along the way, um, and how do we make uh, robust decisions. Um, and even though, you know, those are two very different examples um, from California with uh, the drought and from um, South Florida Water Management District with um, a sea level rise, for example, um, there's a lot that we can um, learn from each other and a lot of common themes. Uh, next slide, please. So, um, you know, today, again, we're going to highlight um, some case studies um, related to adaptation leading practices and discuss opportunities, challenges, and barriers. Um, we're also going to have a panel discussion um, to explore opportunities um, to enhance the co-creation of actionable climate change science um, in the Northeast. Um, and so we are going to start, um, you know, with the utility perspective um, this morning um, and then hear from um, uh, Ellen to provide the um, climate service provider perspective, um, and then finally wrap up with with a panel to to tie it all together. Um, and with that, I will uh, turn it to Julie. Yeah, so I just wanted to quickly build off of Alan's reflections and what will happen today. And I wanted to draw your attention to our community whiteboard. And if I could just quickly share my screen for those um who haven't jumped into it i put it in the link um, but then also would encourage you to hop into our community whiteboard um so thus far we've gotten to highlight key takeaways those are the stickies in yellow um, we've posed unanswered questions those are the stickies in blue and we've gotten to share and think about um, challenges and gaps. So those are the stickies in red. And now we're revealing a fourth colored sticky. So these are the green ones. Um, these green stickies are meant to capture actions. So ways um, in which we can both individually and as a community to start to think about what we can do to answer those questions, to fill those gaps and to overcome those challenges. So throughout today, oh, we're really gonna have an opportunity to hear from our speakers and panelists, and importantly, from each other of what those actions might be. So as you're listening, um, 
I would encourage you to consider um, those actions, um, what you see as important next steps, and please feel free to share them on the board or also to bring them to the discussion throughout the workshop today. And um, so with that, I will stop share, um, but encourage you to jump in there and add more information and we'll, uh, I believe, pass the mic back to Alyssa. Mm -hmm. Yep, um, great. And so before we get into our first presentation, I'd like to um, do one or two Mentimeter questions just to see how how we're going, how we're feeling in the group. Um, so Rebecca, if you could share your screen, perfection. Um, so we'll use the code this morning, 1910-2006, which was a particularly good year for me. Um, and so go ahead and head over to menti.com and we'll answer the question, what did you learn from yesterday's workshop? Or really, what did you learn from the last two days of workshops or you know, what has been standing out for you? What are some things that you learned from yesterday's workshop? I'll give you a few seconds to hop over there. I know it's still, still early for some of us, probably most of us. So then I take a second. What did you learn from yesterday's workshop? Some folks couldn't attend, totally okay. Understandable, our schedules are very busy. Glad to have you here today though. What did you learn from yesterday's workshop? First day was excellent. Games can be fun and educational. Uh, we learned about dealing with uncertainty and how to plan when you're dealing with uncertainty. Um, there are paths forward and tools to make better decisions in the context of climate adaptation. That's great. Um, the way you approach adaptation should evolve over time. Absolutely. Yeah, we want to, you know, you have to keep it adaptive approach to your adaptation maybe is that that's too much of that same word in in one sentence but great um importance of having an analytical framework for decision support great one more question right rebecca all right did you have any questions from yesterday's session i know we're the miro that we're that we're working in is supposed to capture some of those questions but I'll give it about 60 seconds for folks to think about whether they had anything additional from yesterday's session. Not applicable. Everything was answered. How great. Wouldn't that be lovely if one workshop could answer everything? What comes next? That's a great question, I think. And that's a lot of what we'll talk about today some action items and we'll think about what we can do after after these three days of being together in this virtual space. Any other questions? Learn more about risk mo modeling. Interesting. How can we use this opportunity to work together? Yeah, and that's gonna definitely be a big part of our panel that's coming up later. That's really great to hear. You're in the right place, turns out. We will be talking about that. All right. Um, I will, um, I think we should probably move on to our first presenter. Um, our first presenter is um, Tirasu Asefa from Tampa Bay Water. Um, and they are going to be sharing um, a little bit about working together from a utility perspective. So please take it away. 